But my goal is for the whole program to understand that goes way beyond basketball, way beyond basketball. Like, I need help. Like, I'm helping these kids, but somebody's got to help me or I can't help these kids. Like, help, like, the helper. And and the same thing with these kids. Like, like if, if somebody over the apartment is, is, is helping you because you ain't got nothing to eat, well, somebody better help the brother that's helping y'all eat. Like, we have to help, like, the helper. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. Uh, I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know here we focus on helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So we drill down on stories, strategies, and successes. Coach Rob, man. Coach Rob, Coach Rob. Coach Rob, you think you can help a student athlete succeed beyond their degree? I'm just curious. You think I can? Oh, well, that's my purpose. That's that's hey, that's what I do. Is um, I'm 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 trying to be, well. We don't necessarily feel the success at our level, but I my my job is to set the foundation so they can succeed once they once they get done hooping at my level and then and then the next. So I, I mean, I don't have my hands on them actually succeeding when they're 27, 28 years old. But yo, that that foundation is is set by them jump stops they doing like right now and getting to class on time. So it's um yeah, it's, I'm I'm setting the foundation for these young brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And man, I, I I know I didn't give you a formal introduction, Coach Rob, but you know I I just wanted to get into the conversation because I because I'm excited. You know you you have so much experience, and you know now you're the the head coach at. Mir Costa College, yeah. you know, for, for the men's basketball program. And I, I so you so you may mention the jump stops. I I, I just want to go there for a second because oh. you have an infatuation with jump stops. I do. Please just 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 elaborate. Why why is there such such an infatuation for you with jump stops? Man, I um it's it's well it's a basketball term, it deals with fundamentals, but um I, I've used it in every aspect of my life. And I use it to teach lessons in, in life because in basketball, um, when you jump stop in a, in a game, you have a firm base underneath you. And when you jump stop in basketball, the game slows down once you do that. And the likelihood of you making a good decision after you jump stop is exponentially higher than if you didn't. And so I'm trying to get kids to just do it in every aspect of their life. Like no matter what's going on, if you'll just if you'll just jump stop and get a good base, the next decision you make is going to be better. Slow it down. So I said, hey, you're you're having a bad relationship, you know, with your girlfriend, jump stop. You, you're failing a class, jump stop. You're about to get in a fight with the homie in the locker room, jump stop. Like whatever it is, just jump stop. And then the next thing you do, it slows down and you can make a better decision. Because when things get going fast, man, dudes make bad mistakes. And I, I and I was one of them. So I I mean I, I understand that. And so and also in basketball, it just it just helps you, you know. It 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 just does. It it brings it's 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 the fundamental foundation of movement in basketball. And so anytime you can lock in on fundamentals of anything that you do, any profession, if you can get the fundamentals right, then the next thing is going to be looking good. So yeah, I I'm serious about jump stopping, like like all the time. Like the kid will come in right now and like, coach, I got it. I'll be like, hey, man, jump on two feet right now, get in stance. And then if he does it, I'll be like, all right, now let's talk about it. <laughs> like, let, let, let's talk about what's happening. Let, let's go on and see what's next. Like, what's, what's happening? Just trying to get them to slow up and make. I just want young people to make good decisions on and off the court. That's, hey, that's all. And um, that's, the way I, that, that's the way I get my point across. Man. It makes it makes so much sense, and and you know, being a fellow junior college player, and you know, seeing seeing those fundamentals, and and realizing that yeah, if you jump in the air, you're not if you don't if you're not like getting ready to do a jump stop, but you just jump and make a pass, or you're just in motion, you're just trying to take a random shot, it, it it don't work out that well. Like it don't you you go out of bounds, it's a turnover. Your efficiency, like, you can just be on the list. Your if your efficiency, and I'm all about efficiency. I don't care about points, rebounds. Now I'm all about efficiency. Like how efficient are you on the court in class in study hall? Like how efficient, what are your percentages? What is your plus minus? Like how many shots does it take to get you to 10 points? I don't care about 10 points. 
because because efficiency translates on throughout life. Efficiency translates, you know, not the sum. The sum don't translate because like kids who get buckets at this level, they're not getting buckets at the D1 level like that. It don't work. Kids who score 30 in high school. Yeah, they're scoring five in college because those points don't translate. You want things that translate from 20 to 22, 22 to 30, 30 to 40. And that right there is efficiency. I'm trying to get kids to be efficient in what they do because that translates to success when you move up, when you level up, as they say. If you can be efficient, it translates. So when a guy comes to recruit one of my kids, I'll be like, hey, no, you see how he's efficient? He can do that at your level. What he's doing at my level, he can do at your level because he's efficient. It's not volume. You know what I mean? It's it's not volume. I'm not I'm not big on volume. You know what I mean? Like I, I if I'm playing I'm playing a kid tonight. He's really good from this other college, and we're not gonna stop him because the fool takes twenty something shots. Like how are you gonna stop a kid who takes twenty shots a game? But if I can get him to shoot thirty seven percent or less, then we're good. So I'm all about if I'm going at his efficiency. I'm not going at his totals, and <clears throat> that's uh that's. Hey, that's, that's the mark, but that's what I'm trying to get for the kids. Hey, let's be efficient. Let's be efficient in everything we do. Well, I, I never, I never thought about it that way because yeah, the, the efficiency does translate because Kevin Durant, I know he's, he's beyond efficient when it comes to, you know, knocking down jumpers and field goal percentage, but I've never even like looked at the two because I, I, I was about to ask you, well, why does the kid who scores 30 in high school, why, why doesn't it translate to the next level? But that makes so much sense, Coach. He's not getting them shots. And and when you're the man on your team, you miss six in a row, you get to take shot seven. Well, on my team, after the fourth one, like, you just sit your ass down, man. Where, well, I'm good. Like, like, let's get somebody in here that's going to make a layup. You know what I mean? Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go in a different direction. You don't get that chance because there's talented people. So you have to be, like, a, you have to be efficient. Man. Hey, as a side note, hey, Kevin Durant is a complete freak, yo. Like, hey – I, the other day I was explaining to my kids about Kevin Durant. It's funny you said that. And they were like, oh, Kevin Durant. I was like, do you know why it's so easy for him? And they're like, no. And I was like, his release point for his jump shot is at 10 feet. Like that would be like you shooting on an eight foot rim. Like he shoot, he just shoots right into the rim. Like all of us is going like this up in the air. That fool is just like, ugh. he's just, ugh. he's just throwing it in there. It's it's a whole different. I was like, put the rim down to eight feet and shoot jump shots on it. That's what it's like for Kevin Durant with his jumper. Because that fool's release point is at 10. It, they'll stop him, and he'll be up shooting a shot, and his fingertips will be at 10 feet shooting that because he's so long with that. It's Yeah, that's, in, yeah, that's incredible. That brother's gifted, man. He can just throw it. He just It's like he's throwing it in the ocean, yo. It's just wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's true, true, true freaking nature, true, true, true freaking nature. But uh, so you were talking about um, like how you were just communicating, you know, with your with your young athletes, your young leaders. Talk, talk a little bit about your coaching style, because I've seen you by way of last chance, you and then the conversations that that, that we've had, because what you you got 20, 20 plus years in the game, uh, coaching and working with working with young men. But. I would categorize from hearing what you said, your coaching style more of teaching versus coaching. Can you can you break that down a little bit and how you got to that point? Oh man, the um, when I fart, when I fart, when I first started this thing out, um, I was so young when I was I was a high school I was a high school head coach at 25 years old, and of course I knew absolutely everything about basketball at 25 years old. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> I jumped in and I was, and I was, it wasn't like I wasn't successful. I mean, I, I was successful, but I was coaching. Hey, a brother wasn't teaching anything. I was, just, I was just coaching that that's it. And not only that, I was selfishly coaching. Uh, you know, like when I first started hey, like earlier when we, we, we talked before we came on, I was like, yeah, we have a game tonight. But when I first started coaching, people asked me, I'm like, no, I got a game tonight. Like I got a game tonight like I don't know about them I got a game but when I changed that mentality to like we got a game now it, it became a little bit different it took a while because I was I was young I was still playing and I was you know I was I was so arrogant um and and when you're 25 you're not a lifelong learner you're not um uh when you but when you start to get to those lessons in life and learning then you become like a lifelong learner and what what changed for me was um 
I went to graduate school at Emporia State University in, in Kansas. And everyone said, all right, you got to do PE because you got to teach PE in California to get it to have a job at the community college or college level. Right. And mm -hmm. so I went to sign up and um, they said, hey, you need to take like these two classes to do PE or we can or you can get your master's in education, instruction and curriculum. And I was like, well, make that so not even thinking as to why, but God had a plan, bro. And I got my master's in instruction and curriculum and on the court and off the court, I became a teacher. I changed my whole philosophy about how to, how to coach. Um, I mean, a, a practice plan is no different than a lesson plan. Um, the curriculum is no different than what you do. Uh, at the end of the year, you know, you want your kids to have a certain outcome in the classroom. And so you come up with objectives to meet those outcomes throughout the course of the year, you know, whether it be chapters, whether it be testing or whatever, basketball is the same. And so I want an outcome. I want to win a league championship. So I come up with objectives to meet them, just like they were chapters in a book that we are studying. And you got to know this to know this and know this to know that. And we follow and we follow that plan. And I started that about 10, 12 years ago. And what I've noticed is kids responded better to teaching in practice. But what I also noticed is that students responded better to coaching in a classroom. And so I flipped my model and the kids in my classroom needed more motivation and the kids in my court, they needed more teaching. Um, and so, but sometimes you got to motivate in, in a basketball sense because they, you know, they mess around that day or you don't get the energy that you want. And so I got to take it up a notch and go, but that's really not my style. My, my style is to teach it like I, I want it and, and hold them to that, hold them to that standard. Um, I don't get that animated sometimes, man. I mean, my, my, my fuse can be short some days. These fools be acting up. So I, I mean, I, I gotta, some days, some days I go coach Mo on them. There's some days, you know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> some days, uh, but for the most part, I'm faking if I would do it because that's not how I do it. Like, I'm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to them. I'm trying to get to them mentally. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to get them to understand the learning process like of that and, and yelling and screaming at them only works a few times a year. It really does. Like you're doing it, but it only works. Like there's only a couple of times that you're, they're going to respond differently than when, before you started yelling and screaming. So you got to be really careful as to when you use those one or two. And, but I, my, my thing is to teach, my thing is to teach kids and, in the classroom, I'm coaching kids up. I'm motivating them. I'm coaching them up. But in college basketball, you need to, you, you should be motivated when you walk in the door. Like effort and attitude, that's not something that we got to teach. You know, if I do have to teach that, then there's going to be consequence. So when you come in there, like you, you should be wanting to get better. So let me teach you like how to get, let me teach you how to get better. So I explain every concept that I do. Like on a board, in there, I tell kids every day, I don't give a damn about what play you're running. I need you to understand the concept of the play that we're running. I, I, I could care less about this, this, and that. Why are we running this? Like, why am I telling you to push the ball up the current on the right side of the floor? Like, this, they tell me why we're doing it. You know, like, I, I need to know why, not forget the play. Like, like forget it. Because once they understand why you were doing it, well, now they're more inclined to do that over and over and then when they feel success with that then 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 you, then you got it but you know kids is hard-headed they always want to do it like their way uh so it's always it's always the struggle but i don't see myself as a coach as much as i see myself as as i i teach i'm, I'm about instruction and i'm about the curriculum the curriculum is my basketball and and how i teach it and my instruction style of, of how i how i get that across how i get that across is is very unique um, um i'm very forgiving um i build a bridge first i don't come at you week one week two um i'm not going to get at you until i know something about you like well, but then i will but i have to know like i got to know something about the kid because one thing that you learn being in the classroom for 20 years is every single child has a different learning style every single one of them there's i've never met two that's the same now they might be similar but never two that have the exact same learning style so I got to learn that learning style. Is it visual? You know, is, is it, is it audio? Is it touch and feel? The only way you're going to get it is by doing it in practice. Or do you have to see it on a board first? Because you'll be in a, you'll be in this practice. I'm with 12 dudes 
and we'll go over it. And the next day, the fools don't like half of them. Like, I don't remember that. Like, I don't, I don't remember what happened. And then, or you can draw something up on the board, you know, and we're going to do this. And you go and practice. They're like, I don't remember that. So you, you got to get it. Which kid is, is what I have a kid. I have, I have this little guard I got on my team this year and um, he has a learning disability and he's not going to remember anything. He struggles with concepts and, and everything. But if you draw it on the board and then do it within seconds of drawing it on the board, he can get it. Like he can get mm. it. But any other way, he's not going to get it. We could run it over and over and over in practice. And the next day he will look at you like uh, I got taught it in Mandarin. Like the next day he's like, huh? Like what? Like I go where? But he has a different type of, he has a different type of learning style. Like they have a different type of learning style to it. Um, I, I got another kid who, without his earphones in, without music playing, like he's not fluid in anything he does when he practices. Like when he's working, like he can't have him in when we're practicing, but when he's working on his game, cause you know, we make so many shots a day and we work on this and we get the heavy bags out and we do that. He's like, he's like, he's just like a robot. He's rigid. He's this and he's that. That fool puts in them earbuds, them, them white things in his ears. Man, that dude's a gazelle out there. Like, I see him move and see him shake. And I'm like, it's, it's way different. Like, he, 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 needed, he needed that. And so learning those things is important. And that's what I do is I study every kid. Like, I study them from the day they walk in. I study them in every conversation, how they walk on campus, how they walk in the room. Like, I'm, I'm building that bridge because college basketball is incredibly difficult to play. And the majority of these kids are not going to be successful as they want. Like they're going to fail. Hmm. That's that. That's it. Like you have this goal. Every kid's like, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna go there. No, you're not. They're, they're going to fail. Like very few are like, oh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go to the Mountain West. And then they come in and they go to the Mountain West. Or I'm gonna go to the ACC. Ain't nobody going to the ACC from junior college. Like you ain't going. So the they have it. You're going to you're going to fail. So now when I have these conversations of failure. The bridge is there so they know Rob loves them. Like they know that they, they know they know it. And that comes from learning their style and, 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 and figuring out how they learn from building building that bridge. And I did the same thing in the classroom. In a, in a classroom, it takes me about a month to figure out all 28 of them. But I'll figure it out, all 28. And that's how I come at them when I have to come at them. Because as the macro, as the macro, hey, if you throw everything out there at a macro at a group of kids, if I talk to all my team at the same time, Every single one of them dudes hear it differently. And I realize that. So I might have to circle back around with these four, circle back around with those two, or just realize, hey, them three right there just ain't going to get it. That's just not going to happen. They, they, they just, they just, they're just not going to, they're not going to get that. Like, all right, if I got to make this big adjustment, like I tried to make this adjustment in this game the other night where you come off this double pick, but I needed him to stop and then screen for the first screener. So, so I can get my man on the block and when I did it, I looked around. I'm like, there's two guys in this. There's two guys on this team that can make that adjustment. That's it. There's two. And I knew the rest of them. Like, they, they didn't have that. Like, they didn't, they didn't have that. But that's from learning, watching them learn throughout the course, like, of, of, of the basketball season. So, yeah, I'm a, like, I'm a team. I don't know how good a coach I am, bro. I have no idea. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I know I can teach. And I'm hoping at some point, at the college level, like my teaching and my style will translate to success, like on the court and, and coaching. All right, coach. So that's interesting. Just hearing you talk about like really break down in real time, what it looks like for you to build the bridge for you to connect with your players and understand their learning style. And I, I think it's a great segue right now. Cause I actually interviewed, actually interviewed Josh Phillips. And as, as we saw in, in, in the series, Last Chance You, for those of you all out there listening and watching, if you're like, I knew that guy looked familiar from somewhere, well, he, he, was, he was one of the stars in, in, in Last Chance You, right? So we got, we got Coach Rob yeah. here, you know, big time, big time. Uh, so when, when I was watching the series and going back looking at it, I remember one of the parts that you specifically said was when, when you began to identify certain things you would you would pull them off to the side and you would just you know just share not not necessarily random comments but intentional comments to just shift his focus and calm him down a little bit uh so talk 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 a little bit about that because 
my it was mind blowing the the whole to hear him reveal that and just everything in the series i was like wow talk a little bit about that coach rob hey the the josh the josh phillips the josh phillips experience was um that was that that's one of those things where like that's why i say you're a lifelong learner and um uh what happened with josh now i've I've, I've, I've taught and I've, I've coached kids on the spectrum before, but his was a little bit unique because that fool is like six, eight with a 40 inch vertical. That that's, that's, that's different than, than the kid you have in high school who might be on the spectrum a little bit. Like Josh was different. And so, um, Josh was different, was different to coach. And I saw it, I kind of saw it early on, although I didn't understand like the reason for it, but I did understand like, Josh wasn't going to respond to anything negative, like ever, like he was, he, he wasn't going to, and the louder it got, the worse it was going to be. And I'm not talking about just a voice, no matter what it is in his life, as things got louder, like if the gym was loud, if the bus ride was loud, like it, it, it was, it was, it was a lot, you know, for him. And so I can't tell you how many times over the practices or even a game, when I would talk to Josh, I would pull him up. When we would talk, I, would, I wouldn't even ask him anything that had remotely to do with basketball. It had nothing to do with basketball. So he would be over there, and he would be struggling, and I'd be like, hey, what's up with your what – happened, what happened with the bus ride today? Because he used to take the bus from Pasadena down for practice. So I was like, what's going on with the bus ride today? What, what was that like for you? I mean, because sometimes it would be tough for him, right? So Mo would be going over, like, his whole practice and everything, right? And me and Josh would be over there talking – about the crazy dude on the bus, like, like coming down from, from the thing. But by doing that, like we would go off topic and we would talk about something different. When he goes back in, it was like the reset would hit for him. Like each time, like even mm-hmm. on the bench, he would come over there pissed off and mad. And he'd be about this. He'd be talking about like all, like all these, all these different things. And I would, I would bring up something that maybe happened in practice earlier in the week. I wouldn't even talk about the game or anything like that or something that happened in the locker room because we had some characters on the squad so like so he would come over and like josh would be huffing and puffing because he's he's literally about to put hands on somebody and that's not gonna be pretty that's not gonna be pretty right and so so i'd be on the bench and i'd specifically i would be like hey uh what was up with dc in the locker room yo before the game and so josh would be like man i don't know what's up with that dude and he would go off and say something else but by the time that conversation ended, reset. And then Josh would be ready like to to go to go back in. So um it was a unique relationship. Um Josh trusted us. He he really trusted me as well. He would um he would come to the gym sometimes and he couldn't even go in. And he would text me and I would come outside and he goes, I've been walking around campus and I just I can't be in the gym today. I just walk him over to the bus stop. I'll be like, all right, homie, we'll catch up with you tomorrow, man. Like, come in and be right. I'll talk to coach. And um, and he and and as we got that relationship and we understood that with Josh, it was it was better for him, you know. I mean, it was a hindrance though. There's no way that doesn't take away from your development as a basketball player, though. There's no way. Like, cause you can't just put the grind in every day on your body mentally, be in the gym every day, do that. Like it is, but I mean, that being said, that kid has found a way, man, to make himself to the, to a Division One basketball player. You know, uh, he's incredibly gifted, but it takes a lot more than than them gifts to get to where he is. And it's a tribute to him, man. I, it's, it's, he's 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 a great kid. I met him during the pandemic. Um, used to go pick him up and, and, and take him to the gym or or and stuff. And he was uh, we we became we became pretty close during the pandemic time, and. Um, uh, it, it helped me, that bridge helped me to help him on the side, you know, cause, cause, uh, uh, you know, Mo, when Mo is, when Mo is, is, is coming at the team, he's going to come at the team. Like he don't care about the individual as he's coming at the team. And so, and so a lot, so a lot of times with well, a lot of those guys, you know, I'd have to go over there and be like, Hey, yo, he wasn't talking to you. Like, why are you taking that personal? You know what I mean? Like you get back on defense. He's not talking to you. You know, mm-hmm. like maybe the next day he might be talking to you when he's talking about like you need to be here early to do this and that. But at this moment, like he wasn't talking to you. Like get out your feelings. I just go, hey man, get out your feelings. He ain't talking to you right now. Like hey, just just just, just play hard and 
and keep it and keep it moving. But that all came from like like in, like I said earlier, like every kid who comes in, um, I'm, I'm building that trust and that bridge with, so that when I do speak to them, like they know it's coming, like for something real and and and, and something of, of of love. And we had so much love for Josh, and I, I, I hope it I hope it happens for the kid as we talked about life beyond basketball because that's all we want. Um, that's why I'm here. Is 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 really is books, tuition, fees, room, and board, man. That's, that's, that's what I'm here for. And I had a coach at a D2 call me the other night. He goes, Rob, like your kid, like he, like he's struggling, like his, his field goal percentage and his dad, and I'm gonna have to bench him. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, hey, does he have a place to stay? Is he eating? Did he have to pay for anything, his supplies, class? He's like, no, nah, he's on scholarship. I was like, well, then you've done your job, bro. Like, thanks coach. Like, thank you. Like, He'll figure out the basketball part. I, I don't care about the basketball. It's crazy, but I don't. I don't care if a kid plays. Like, like, I, like I don't. I want him to play, and I hope we put him in a place where he has the opportunity to, if he does right, he gets to play. That's, I want that experience for him. But ultimately, yo, I want, a, I want a brother to graduate debt-free and have that springboard to be able to change the trajectory of their last name. That's what I'm looking for. And, and so with Josh, I mean, it can – Hey, if he can, if he can get that degree and stick it in there, like it, it'll be different. His life will be different. His kid's life will be different. His family's life will be different. And uh, mm-hmm. that's why I was, I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I was just blessed to be a part of that situation and, and learn and learn from Josh. We helped Josh, but I learned more. I got more from Josh than he got from us. Believe that. Mm, man. Yeah. 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 And it's funny that you, that you brought up, you know, your five reasons why, because I, I interviewed Deshaun, you know, with, with after the first season yeah. and he and he talked about that, too. I, I was going back watching one of the clips and he was like, yeah, you know, Co- Coach Rob, he always talks about, you know, don't ask for more play time. You got to earn. You got to earn and do more with what you have. Yeah. And then he said, Coach Rob, always books, tuition, fees, room and board, you know, the, the, the five things. Five. I, I got everybody with a shirt on in Maricosta wearing that. My wife, my wife has a sweatshirt she wears to the game that says that. Like, it's to the point now where kids, they don't even ask me why for anything. Because if they're like, hey, coach, why? They, I'm going to be like, books, tuition, fees, room, and board. Like, that's the why. Well, I don't care what your question is. That's the why. Like, why I got to be there? Books, tuition, fees, room, and board. Why I got jump stop? Books, why I got to pass my class? But everything is those five reasons. Like, ab- absolutely everything. Why I got to be a practice on time? Right there. Why I got to be a good citizen? Stay out of trouble right there like five reasons i'm giving you five reasons why to every question you got in junior college and that's why <laughs> that's why i'm mad with it. i don't even explain it. i don't explain nothing like like why i gotta run that play or, or how come i can't shoot the three room boy tuition if you shoot the three your ass ain't getting a scholarship so listen to me <laughs> books tuition fees room and board just just do it that's the five reasons why you need to listen Oh my goodness. Okay. So you said you, you brought up t-shirts. So I, so I got to ask you, are you still printing shirts now? Oh, Cause I man, saw. Dude, hey, uh, <laughs> I, um, it's kind of my thing. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's my thing. I've always, I've always loved t-shirts. I, I used to buy the craziest t-shirts, you know, and the most inappropriate ones, like in the night. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, Hey, they sent me home in high school once, bro. I kid you not. I had on a t-shirt with um it was skeletons in all 69 sexual positions on the shirt like 69 it, it was <laughs> i kid you not i wore that and they they sent me home in high school i had that on i got like almost all the way through the day and one teacher's like what the hell and i, I was like yeah. well, i used to i used to i used to have some crazy t-shirts and i like making them and i like original ones and once my wife bought that thing at the house where i can make my own bro it was on like it, hey it's on and the motivation that can happen from those shirts, especially if you use it correctly. And this is what I'm talking about from an instruction standpoint. Um, like my our our go our um our our my team this year, like our thing is help the helper. Because you know in basketball, when you have to help, somebody's got to help you. Like if I if you, your man gets if your man's getting to the cup and I go over and help, somebody better come help me, or that dude's gonna get a layup or he's gonna get the offensive rebound. So we gotta help the helper. So I put help the helper on every single thing because in our defense, we force, we like to force baseline. We like trap, we like to get up in you. 
uh, doing it that way. But to do that, I'm going to come help you. Somebody's got to come help me. But my goal is for the whole program to understand that goes way beyond basketball, way mm -hmm. beyond basketball. Like, I need help. Like, I'm helping these kids. But somebody's got to help me or I can't help these kids. Like, help, like, the helper. And and the same thing with these kids. Like, like if, if somebody over the apartment is 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 helping you because you ain't got nothing to eat, well, somebody better help the brother that's helping y'all eat. Like, we have to help, like, the helper. So I put that on every shirt, like that, even if it's small, it goes on the back or, or that, but that books, tuition, fees, room, board, five reasons. I, they all know that too. Like I put that, I put that on everything. The other night we're playing this team and um, my kids, they're infatuated with the three and can none of them make one. It's crazy. So <laughs> they all want to shoot the three. And so when they shoot the three in practice, I kid you not, they yell pool party. Cause that's what they say for golden state warriors do. Right. They'd be like pool party. And they shoot these threes. Right. So the other day, I was like, I just, I was done with it. I was so, I was done because they just missed the threes in practice. And one kid makes it and everybody's going crazy. And then they miss seven. Nobody says nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like seven misses. Then on the one way, who party? They all hype. I'm like, dude, man, we won for seven. Like, why, why are we celebrating? Like, why are we celebrating? But the, um, uh, I finally, like the other day, I'm like, oh, hell no. It ain't a pool party. It's a block party. Get your ass to the block. We getting twos. It's a block party. And so everybody was like, block party. They was like, they got into it, right? I was supposed to, it's really happened the other night. So it's Tuesday night. We're playing a huge game on Wednesday. It's Tuesday night, and I got to go watch this high school kid play over at Scripps Ranch. It's about 40 minutes away. And I get in my car, and I was like, I can go watch this kid play, or I can go over to Michael's and buy some T-shirts and fabric things and make a shirt that says exactly what I just taught to reinforce that idea for tonight's game. So I go over to Michael's. They had, luckily I ain't got no team, man. Like I, bro, I've, I've had all kinds of stuff happen this year, injuries and eligibility. So I got I only got like seven players suiting up right now. But I was fortunate they had eight baby blue t-shirts there, and I bought some baby blue t-shirts because that's one of our things. I bought dark blue material. I went home, took me three hours, and I made nine shirts. And I, on it, it said pool party with an X through it, and underneath it said block party. And on the back, it said help the helper. And so when the kids went in to go get their uniforms, because I hang everybody's stuff up every day, that's my thing, practice or games. Like, that is my thing. Like, when you walk in, your stuff is up, it's shining, you're ready to go. So they walked in and they saw that them kids lost their minds. They, they lost their minds. They thought it was the most great. And, they, and, the, and the whole day, a shoot around, block party, they, a coach block, we're getting in the van, block party. They, they pulled the a game block party and damn if we didn't destroy that team on the block, but they still hit like 12 threes and beat us. But Hey, we scored like we were 60% from the field. We only, we only took 12 threes, but we made almost every shot. We scored 87 points and it was, a, and that's what I wanted though. I wanted a block party and that t-shirt reinforced that. And them kids are going to remember that for the rest of their life, for the rest of their life. And so that's what the power of print can do you put on a shirt it, it, it's it's powerful not just if it's random it's not it's funny but if you can reinforce it if you can reinforce that hey that's what i'm doing and so that's what they got they got jump stops on there to change your life they got all that they got help the helper on everything they wear and now they got one that says x'd out pool party no offense to mr pool up in golden state but i needed a block party that's that's what i need i need a party on the block and so uh yeah i'm still I'm still making T-shirts, actually. And, and I'm actually in the process. I'm making some this week uh, to send to everybody who donated, like, money to my program. I'm going to send everybody uh, their own. If you donate a certain amount, I mean, I'm grateful for every dollar. Don't get me wrong. People be like, how much? I'll be like, do 20. Like, only 20? I'm like, man, hey, four y'all do four y'all do 20. I'm taking my team out to dinner twice on during the game week. Like, that stuff means something. Like it, it, every, every dollar counts at the junior college level, but those who, who really broke me off, like I'm, I'm making everybody their own and I'm, uh, um, and I'm sending that out to my, my donors. And I started, I started out doing that, um, uh, this week, but I believe in the power to print and I put something like on, I put something on everything, like absolutely everything. And, and if, if, it, if I think it can make a difference, my wife looked at me and she goes, why it's 11 o'clock at night. It's Tuesday. 
I've been grinding since seven in the morning. My eyes is red. I'm tired. It's just me and my dog, Bodie. And my wife comes out. She was asleep. And she goes, what are you doing? And I was making that. And she goes, what are you doing that for? And I told her, I was like, if it means I get two extra points tomorrow, it's worth it. It's worth it to me. Two points. I'll grind. I'll grind for six hours during this whole process for two points. Because that's how much I'm in. Like, I'm in. Like, I'm, I'm trying to win. Like, I'm in. And so, uh, yeah, we had a block party. Uh, we got, but, I mean, we're going to have to make some threes sooner or later, though. But these brothers can't <laughs> shoot at all, man. I mean, it's everybody. I'm playing with four post players. They're all like six, seven, all of them. They're skilled, but, you know, they can't shoot. They can't get to loose balls. You know what I'm saying? They jog up the court. You know, like, hey, all of them. All of them run around like Anthony Davis. You know what I'm saying? About to get hurt and slow at, at all times. <laughs> That at all times, man. But Anthony Davis will give you 30. You know what I mean? Like it, he'll it, give you 30. It, and so I got some dudes that'll give you 30, but they're jogging around and always are like, dude, my ankle, my back, my side. It's always up, man. Always up. Oh God. Man. Coach, I think that's I, I think I think it's really interesting. And we're we're gonna get ready to get ready to wrap this up in just a second. But I think I think it's really interesting though that even now, you know, you're 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 the head coach and everything like that. And you still you go in you put the jerseys up you set everything up like why like why why is that that you still you're still in a position to where you like you put so much stock into that because i know like i said before 20 years in the game 400 plus wins like yeah it's um uh it keeps you humble and basketball is a humbling experience like we lost the other night and and when you're in college and you lose, like, it's your fault. Like, I recruited those kids. I coached those kids. It, it, it's, it's on me. And that's humbling to walk out of that gym, putting everything you into it, and you lose. And I look over, and I'm like, that coach is better than I am today. His program is further along than mine is. Like, you have to accept that. Like, you have to. Basketball in itself is, is, is humbling. And it keeps me humble doing the little things. Like, like all, I'm not above anything. And like, if my assistant wants to hang them up or pass them out, like that's cool. But a lot of times in Juco, you know, your assistants can't get there till after work or do other things. And I'm here during the day. So it's what, it's what I do. It keeps me invested. You know, it keeps me there. And I always go back to, I always go back to this. Like it's, Hey, this is real, man. Like if Jesus could wash feet, dog, like I can do the uniforms. It's the same mm. kind. You know what I'm saying? I'm servicing these dudes, but I'm going to take care of it, you know? And so if he could do that, then I can, I can do that. You know, that's what, that's, that's what I'm figuring. I can, I can take, I can hang the stuff up. Like I can wash it. I can make sure they clean. You know what I mean? I can, I can take care of it. I can take care of the young men and they appreciate it, but it can, it's, it's more for me than them. Wow. It's more for me and keeping me grounded than for like my players. Although I love it for them as well. Cause they love having that. They'll go in there today for a shoot around and their shorts will be up. Their t-shirt will be hung up. Like it, it looks nice right now when you go in there, you know what I mean? Like that. And they, they, they feel that it feels collegiate, but I do that stuff. I do that stuff for me to like, nah, this is like, this is real. Don't ever forget like where you, where you came from or it's hard work. And like when I walked out the other night, I was humbled. You mean I, we lost a game and I was humbled, but the next morning I can wipe it clean and I'm ready to go because I can lose with, I, I, I can live with losing because no one's going to outwork me. And hmm. you might beat me, but you're not going to outwork me. And if I, and if somebody outworks me now, now I'm gonna have problems sleeping at night. Like I'm a struggle. Like I'm going to struggle with that. But even my last year or two, I played basketball when I was trying to play in the United States basketball league. Like, I was like, no one's going to outwork me. I might not be big enough. I might not be talented enough, but no one's going to outwork me. And I took that with me to on beyond like basketball or even beyond coaching when it comes to teaching or, or when I had my job, when I, I had my side hustle, when I was, I was, I was selling t-shirts and masks and beanies and everything. I'm like, nobody's going to outwork me at this job right here. I'm hustling. Like I, I'm, I'm a hustle. No one's going to outwork me. I'm, I might not win, but you, you ain't going to outwork me to beat me. And so that um, that's one of the parts of putting that stuff up. Like I'm gonna work, like I'm gonna get up like, and I'm gonna work. And 
I'd like to say that's all me, but hey, man, shout out to Ted Robinson. Like my dad wasn't no joke, man. That fool got up every day and never, I never seen him miss a day of work in my entire life. Never once, never once did I watch my dad miss a day of work. And that, and then, and, and I knew it, right? When it was going on, like I knew he would always go to work. That was his thing. He would get up, he would go to work. But in like 19, it was like 1998, 99, my dad was like, dude, I'm gonna retire. I'm like, how you going to retire? He said, man, I ain't never missed a day of work. Like that fool retired like four years early because he ain't never missed a day. He didn't go on vacations hardly. He didn't miss no days. When it came time, he cashed out like four years early. And, and it sunk into me right there. Like this dude goes to work. Like, my, like Ted Robinson was no joke. He was an incredible father figure for me. And so many of these kids that I get don't have that. So I'm going to be that. I'm going to be that. I'm going to work. I'm going to be here. And one of my hey, one of my shirts this year I wear, and no one else wears it but me, but I'll give it to him here at the end. My shirt I wear, it says, you can count on me. And that's the real. They can count on me. That gym's open at 830 in the morning. You can count on me. Study hall's open at 1. You can count on me. You want to shoot on our night? You can count on me. Like, you can count on me. I'm working. I'm here. And and that's one thing I got from my pops. And and that's one thing that, that keeps me humble. And it keeps me and it keeps me grounded. And and sometimes like doing the uniforms and and the and the little things or or even the little things like like I don't know if you can see this. You see this? Mm-hmm. This is at the front of my office every day. I put this. So I put snacks all in my office. But you gotta spend five minutes with me to get a snack. Like you gonna have, you gonna have to talk to me, bro. You gonna have to sit down. You ain't gonna come in and just eat my snacks and bounce. You know what I mean? Like you gonna have to you gonna have to. You got to tell me what's going on in your life academically, socially, or something, basketball. You got to talk to me, you know, and that's part of the work. Like, I, I, I that's that's part of the work. You can count on me, but it takes these brothers come here like, let me get some food. I'll be like, sit down. Let's talk about it. And that's and that's when I can get at them and continue that bridge that that I'm building and hopefully yeah. be there for the rest of their lives. Man, that's. That's deep. And that, and that, I mean, the five minutes per snack is real deep because my coach, shout out to Coach John Feldman uh, at, at Richland College, shout out to Coach Carter too. Uh, but he would have a loaf of bread and then he would have a thing of peanut butter and a thing of jelly. Yeah, and he yeah. was like, y'all can come through and get a sandwich. Yeah. But, <laughs> man, yeah. you're going you to get that time in. Oh, they're going to have to talk to you. You ain't going to be pissed at me all day. And just come get my scent, get my stuff and eat. No, nah, you gonna have to, you gonna have to tell him. You have to look at me and be like, "Nah, coach, I ain't feeling you." I'll be like, "All right, now we getting somewhere." Like, say it out loud. You know what I mean? Like, I be telling my kids, "Come in my office and say it out loud." Like, stop holding that stuff in. Mm. Like, on the court, you say something. Now I got to put the hammer on you. But when you come in here, say it out loud. I don't even care how you say it. I, I, wow. I don't. Okay, you can come and say it any kind of way. Okay, coach, man, f you. I'll be like, "All right, well, why? What's going on?" Like what, what, what ain't, what ain't you feeling? Let, let, let's get that out the way. Like right now, kids, cause you know, they mumble around and they want to say what you want to hear. You know what you want to hear. I'm like, I don't want to hear all that. I need to hear what you feel. What's going on, dog. Like I can't fit. We can't fix none of this unless you tell me you pissed off cause you ain't playing or why you pissed off cause you ain't playing. Cause once that gets out there, once you put that out there, okay. Hey man, I'm an instructor and I'm analytical. I'm like, well, look at your plus minus homie. Like you ain't playing. Like, you turn the ball over like like you ain't playing like I can tell you why you ain't playing but we got to get it out there first you know you got to get it out there and get them in the right frame of mind so yeah my office is the place man like it, it, it hey this is it if I was younger I'd probably have boxing gloves in here bro I'd be like let's let's, let's just figure it out come on man let's just figure it out. I mean, come on me and you let's figure it out head gear oh, come on man let it out come on man let's go and then after we spar for a couple minutes all right let's sit down let's talk about it like what's going on what's going on with english class what's happening <laughs> you know man but i'm way too old bro i get rattled i mean i i get dizzy getting up out of chairs man much less i can't box nobody bro <laughs> oh man coach i got i gotta ask this question then we're gonna transition we about to be done i probably i gotta ask this question yeah. I, I was because i was looking at it and and as you kept talking about building bridges as you kept talking about teaching as you kept talking about relationships and i want to bounce back to last chance you just for a second there was a point in the series where I had to take a double take on it. I was like, did he really? Is that? There was a point in the series where Shamar mm. came and, and stayed with you. Yep. 
what like what what in your mind told you that 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 this is a good idea <laughs> hey one Shamar has a good heart and he's a good kid and he is the poster child for everything that was wrong in the last 10 years of travel basketball and rankings and and um man he's that kid there bro I mean he's lived place to place since he was in seventh grade because he was good at basketball and Shamar Shamar is homeless first of all Shamar is homeless like when he showed up he had nowhere to live and he didn't graduate high school so he didn't get he didn't get a Pell Grant or anything but the fool can hoop he's 6'5 and he can hoop and so because he can play everybody keeps taking this chance on him or they'll they'll work with him but then the moment they figure out like he's not going to Duke or he's not going to be a lottery pick. Like they don't mess with him as much because when you first start working with him, you're like, this fool's going to the NBA. Oh my goodness. We talk about talented. Shamar ain't no joke. That fool is talented. But with us, with us, it became about something completely different and it had absolutely nothing to do with basketball. And that particular time on the show, when he, um, when, when, when he came home with me, Specifically, the reason why he came home with me is because the kid hadn't done laundry in weeks. In weeks. And so I was like, come on, man, we're going to the crib to do laundry. And it just turned in and he just ended up staying like for the night and that. But I was like, oh, we're gonna, like he, he hadn't done laundry. I think even the thing, I'm like, dude, how many pairs of underwear you got? Like, I'm trying to figure this out. Like, like well, you know, the, the brother is homeless and he, he's just out there living off his basketball ability, whatever he can get. That's that's what he was doing. And so the whole thing with Shamar was trying to get the 22 hours of the day right that had nothing to do with basketball. That's the whole thing with Shamar. And that was my mindset with Shamar. Even now, as as I'm coaching that fool up to try and get him to finish up this GED, because I, I, mean, I was just on the phone with him a week ago trying to trying to trying to get that. Um, so it's uh, uh, we all have a heart for Shamar, but when you're treated like that as a basketball prodigy, like you're delusional as to what hoops is, what life is, how it works. And so then when you're, when you're faced with the realities of real basketball, that brother struggles because it just wasn't a pickup game where you can be six, five with a 40 inch vertical. And that, that, that was tough for him that you can't just, no, you're going to have to do your schoolwork. You got to go to class. Like that was like, that was a struggle. Like, no, no, you can't smoke weed before the game. Like, I know you can in your AAU circuit and your prep school and on, the, on, on and when you're playing your pickup ball, but yo, no, nah, that's not going to work. Like, and, and how you think life works, it doesn't work that way. And so it was, it was getting Shamar right. Incredible kid, though. He can get it right, though, because, I mean, he's not done by any means. He can do his work. He works hard. Like, you put any kind of effort into Shamar, that dude works his behind off. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a good kid, man. If he can get it together, he'll he'll help a program down the road, special scholarship program. Um, but that's why I had him there that day. For, that specifically, it was for his laundry because I looked at his locker, and his locker. I, I'm looking over as he opened up his locker, and he opened it up, and I mean, it looked like the lost and found at at like a, at like a, <laughs> like a, at a locker room. That's what it looked like. It was just random. I'm like, where do you even get these clothes? It was like lost and found. And I'm like, yo, man, pack your stuff up. Come on, let's go do some laundry. Like, we're going to do some laundry. But over the course of that laundry, all right, I'm able to make an impact doing something, saying something else. And that was my bridge that day to get to him. Like, let's do the laundry. Because if I was like, hey, come on, let's talk about this. He'd have been like, uh, okay. You know, hey, hey, we need to talk about this aspect of your life. He'd have been like, yeah, okay. He'd have listened, but he wouldn't have been listening. But the moment I was like, hey, man, once the laundry was in the dryer, he's, he's listening to me. He, he's there. He's locked in. So the laundry helped me that day. Man, fair enough. Fair enough. And that's funny because I think about it now. My locker wasn't I, I, I just used to bring extra shoes, extra clothes. And like it was just in the locker and I just leave it. And then some of it would just stay and then it would get stacked up. So that that that, that makes sense. That, that that really that really that really makes sense though. He had was in that locker time, bro. It was all there. 
It was all there. And all of it was random and none of it matched. So I was like, all right, bro, we got to get this together. Yeah, we, we, we got to get this together. Oh, man. Shout out to him with, with the most colorful tights I've ever seen. But shout, oh, shout out to him because I, I like I like the tights that he has. Man, <laughs> man, he used to wear the craziest. I told you it was just random. Like, where did you even get that? You know what I mean? Like, where you where you find that? You know, nothing, nothing went together. Like nothing went together. Like where you just find all that stuff, bro. You know, yeah, he was, he was the lost, it was lost and found Shamar, dog. I used to joke with him all the time. You come in there and I'd be like, dude, you just got that out the box, right? In the, in the other locker room. Like you just grab that out the box. Like you grab that and put that on. Like, no, nah, Rob, these my sweats from this and that. These my sweat. Cause he's played in like 20 different teams. So he has random stuff from like 20 different squads he's played for in the last like six years because everybody's like oh you can hoop play for us you can hoop so he's got the craziest t-shirts that like you've ever seen him sweats and, and, and tights and everything that has to do with all these different teams he played on man shout, shout out to shout out to shamar shout out to shamar Morris. yeah I, I, man, I love shamar man i hope things are going well with him. yeah for sure for sure coach now now we're gonna we're gonna transition really quick to this is just gonna be some quick rapid fire just to lighten things up a little bit yeah. Oh. Yeah. but uh are you ready? I'm ready, my man. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Favorite cereal? Oh, Raisin Bran. I'm old as hell, bro. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, I'm 50 next week. Man, I'm Raisin Bran. That, that, that's it. My kids be looking at me like I'm crazy every morning. I'm like, wait, but y'all, okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Watch. I'm straight. Raisin Bran. <laughs> every day. Too... Oh, every God. Day. That's too funny. What's your what's your go to book? Oh man, oh uh, my! Uh, for entertainment, for uh, no doubt, for entertainment, uh, I can't tell you how many times I read it. Is Carl Sagan's Contact, like audio or reading? I, I read. That. I'm a sci fi nerd, and um, that is uh, that that's my favorite sci fi concept. Because you know, I ain't about the plays; I'm about the concept. And uh, and the book Contact that he wrote about interstellar travel. Um, it just, it just wonders me and it takes me to different places every time I read or, or listen to it. And so I, uh, I love Carl Sagan's one, uh, uh, contact that is, that's pretty cool. Fair enough. What's your favorite podcast? My favorite podcast, man. Hey, during the pandemic, during the pandemic, I never listened to a podcast, but during the pandemic, I would turn, I would, that's what you, I used to walk my dog every day and you couldn't go nowhere. So I used to walk for hours. And so I would listen to various to various co uh, podcasts and I can't, I can't put the, the, I can't remember the exact one, but what I was most into was the anything about like real history, not like history in our books, but like a different aspect of history told from the, the correct aspect. And, and the, that is big for me. Like if it's, if it's going to be something, if it's going to be something about, you know, a, the Buffalo soldiers, it was written by a Buffalo soldier. You know what I mean? Oh, and wow. uh, so those type of things in a podcast where they're talking about, like they're talking about the real, I, like for, for instance, and I don't mean to, it, it, it's, it's kind of on topic. Um, it, 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 was, it was this podcast about why we dropped the bomb, like on why, why we bombed like Germany and Japan. And it was written from the aspect of Ford and Chevy and GM. Because it was like they, they dropped these bombs to set their car manufacturing back because once it got online, it took about so much of their market share. So they specifically dropped bombs on industrial places in Japan and Germany to, to be able to get a head up. You know what I mean? Like GM. So it was written from GM and Ford's perspective or the podcast was when they're talking about it, of why they did that specifically to get ahead onto like the 70s. But you go on the road now, man, it's all foreign cars from Japan and Germany. So um the uh but like podcasts that that come from a different like perspective you know and uh, you know i wish i could remember you know one of the most interesting ones ever like this is this is real is if you can ever listen i can't remember what, who did it but it was the american revolution written it was from but it was a british broadcast man like you want hmm. you want to see you want to hear something different like they didn't it wasn't the same thing to them that it was to us. <laughs> so it was it was really interesting 
their perspective of America as of our perspective of we was taught of Britain. So those type of podcasts, they like get to it. And I understand like everything is not truth of the truth. You know, I get that in, in my age, you know, like you can't take everything like that. But a hey, history is written by the winners, man. And um, it's when you when you, And so you got to hear another perspective to like there is there's some there's truth to different perspectives, even if, if it's not totally true, there's truth to that perspective. And that's what I try and find in those podcasts. I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to get the real from the real, like when it, like when it happened. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I know you're big on shoes. So what's your go-to shoe? Like, you know, it's a, you know, it's a nice day. Fours. You said Jordan fours? Jordan four, period. And I wore those, um, the, in 11th grade, when they came out, I wore them for the basketball season and, um, and I, that was a great season for me. And so every time I see a pair, it, it makes me feel like I'm 16 again. And so I put them joints on. I love Jordan fours. I coach in them half the time. I got a bunch of pairs of them, but it sucks, man. Them things are always the most expensive things, man. It just like even a sorry pair be costing you three or four, you know, I don't even like, them, but it's a, but it's a, uh, it's a nostalgic thing for me, but no jo- Jordan fours, like, like period. That is my favorite that is that is my favorite shoe to wear and for that reason because i wore them because back in the 80s you wore jordans to hoop in mm-hmm. like you wasn't you were like i'm gonna wear these and and i'm just gonna be looking good at the mall like now nah, i went and bought jordan fours and then i laced them up and then i gave somebody 30 in them like that that's that's why you had jordan fours on like it was that's why we rocked them and so it was a uh it was a different time with those, but definitely Jordan Four, any color, because you know I'll make a T-shirt to match it and wear it to wear it to the gym. There it is, there it is. And then, Coach, what's the so this 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 is this is the winter circle of the week where you get the opportunity to spotlight and highlight somebody you think is grinding, you think they may be overlooked. You just want to give them their flowers, and, and and you're giving them the cosign saying I should interview them next. Who who would be your winter circle of the week? Oh man, who who out who I got out here in the in the in the mix um hey i tell you this the a this the young the young brother over palomar junior college um uh is a straight grinder and an incredible kid like he's in his 30s he can coach his ass off and um this this young brother's for real man um uh, ivan patterson i've gotten to know him a little bit but he is organized his teams play hard but when you talk to him when you talk to him, like you, you can, you can see what's about to happen. Like you, you, you can see it. It's, it's going to happen for this young man. And um, he's in it for the right reasons. And I'm saying that because I mean, the fool just beat me the other night. And that's ain't that humbling when some 30 year old kid just comes in and whoops your ass. You're like, what the hell? Like what the heck just happened? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like what the heck just happened? Um, uh, but hey, hey, what goes around comes around. Because when I was in my thirties, I was giving it to some good dudes too. So I understand. Like I get it now. You know what I mean? I get it now. So, uh, but the brother over Palomar College, man, he is doing a, he's doing an absolute like an incredible job of um, of of that. But if I could interview anybody, anybody, it'd probably be them people up at the Fed making them rate hikes. Like I want to know what they're talking about. Like, you know, I, mean? I want to know what, what Paul's and all. I wonder what them dudes is talking about. Like, I, I'd like to interview them. Like, what data are you looking at about inflation? Let's let's talk about it. But, but if, if it was sports, though, I'd probably mess with that, brother, just because it's fresh in my mind and what just happened. Fair enough. Fair enough. Coach, this is the end right here. I Go. call it... I call it, call it dear student athlete. What what what's your final thought that you want to just impart to a either current or aspiring student athlete? What what's something you want to leave with them to just wrap it up? Oh uh, well, like this week, um, uh, this week with my with my kids, or in the last couple of weeks, what I've what I've um, what I've been emphasized with them is like, and and put into a visual. I've been telling them the last couple of weeks like academically and basketball wise, like I need you to just keep rowing. And I, I literally be going like this when I see him, like, just do, just keep rowing. Like sometimes when you're doing that, like you're rowing fast, sometimes you're rowing slow, but as long as you just keep rowing and we're going in the, like, you're going in the right direction. Like I know sometimes you're going to be into it more than others, but on them days when you're not, well then just give me a couple strokes, you know, just, 
Just give me a couple. You know what I mean? But on the days you are, then let's get somewhere. Yeah, let's, let's get somewhere. But I'm telling them like, hey, yo, young people, just keep like, just keep rowing. Like, no, like no matter what, like just some days will be better than others. But if you could just keep doing that, then your ship is going to go like it's still going in the right direction. Maybe not at the, at the pace that you want or the pace that's needed to get to where your outcome is. But at least you're going in that direction when you're rowing. And I've been telling these fools that for like the last couple of weeks. I'm like, dude, just keep rowing. Like, I, I know it's hard. Like, I, I know. Like, if, if that just means just turning in one of the five assignments, like, we rowing. Like, we, we, we rowing, dog. So let's, hey, young, hey, dudes, just. Just, just, just keep, just keep rolling. Keep your paddle in. Keep your paddle in at all times, even the days you don't want to. There it is. There it is, man. Coach Rob, thank you so much for taking the time. You know, grateful that we've been able to stay connected over over the what past year or so ago, past two years. Oh man, heck yeah! Hey, hey, one, hey, once a year, bro. Come, come hang out with me. Hey, who knows? I mean, geez, I ain't gonna say it too loud, but who knows? I'll probably have another job next year. Just catch up. With you. you know, you never know. <laughs> you know, catch up, man, because it's every job I get, it's a circus and it's new, you know, so I'm learning. I'm learning. I have something new because I'm learning. I'm a lifelong learner and I and I'm I'm learning uh, every day. I'm learning every day things that that hopefully that people behind me, they can catch up on and be like, well, shoot. Well, all right. Well, he did it. Well, that's how it went. And this is what I do because I'm listening to everybody. <laughs> I'm listening to everybody about everything. Fair enough. Fair enough, man. Co- Coach Rob, once once again, man, gra- grateful for you. And hey, when I'm in California, I'm gonna sure. try to pull up on you, just so you know. Man, you got to come. Even if it ain't season, just you got to. Yeah. Especially here on the ocean side, bro. Come on, man. Like, bro, you got to come down to the pier. You got to see that life. It ain't bad, dude. It ain't bad here. I mean, I'm, I know I'm only one game above 500, but yo, it's not a bad place to be one game above 500. At, I'm gonna tell you that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well. Coach Rob, I'm going to let you go ahead and get out of here. We're going to close this thing out. Yeah, I got practice on All right, Coach, handle business, handle business. All right. All right, Coach, peace. Family, as you all know, this is Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. If you enjoyed this conversation, make sure to smash that subscribe button and drop a comment down in the comment section if you're listening on YouTube. Or if you're listening on audio platforms, I'd encourage you just to follow the podcast. But until next time, family, peace. God bless.